morning, and I would like to introduce our uh, speakers for today. We have our project coordinators from Nadaka Park, uh, Lee Dayfield and Laura Rice. Rice? Rice. Price. Laura Price. Okay, and I'll let them take over now. Good afternoon. My name is Lee Dayfield, and I'm here representing the Friends of Nadaka to talk to you about the Nadaka Nature Park and Garden Project. This presentation will begin with the location and the history of Nadaka and will tell you about uh, what we've been doing the last couple of years and also where we plan to go. Um, Nadaka started out as a 10 acre natural site owned by the campfire organization and um, it's located um, on about northeast 175th and uh, northeast Gleason and um, the north end is on northeast Pacific and it was a 10 acre natural area as I said owned by the campfire girls and um, this is a shot an aerial shot that shows the two acres this is the 10 acres that was originally the Campfire Girls Camp, and this is the two acres that was acquired um, in uh, about three years ago. This is St. Aidan's Church, which is on the west side. From 1956 until 1991 is when it was a Campfire Girls uh, Day Camp. And it was purchased by the city of Gresham in 1995. And a few years ago, um, we started, the Friends of Nadaka started being interested in this two acres that was owned by the Nelson family. And so we began to look into it. And at the time I first started having an interest in the two acres, it was, um, $900,000 for that two acres and um, luckily for us the market fell out of the real estate um, market and so once we finally started negotiating with the help of Trust for Public Lands it was down to six hundred and some thousand dollars for that two acre spot and so we um, had started the Friends of Nadaka and started working very closely with the Audubon Society and applied for grants and got um, 200 and some thousand dollars from uh, Metro and 200 and some from East Multnomah Soil and Water Conservation District. And then the Nelson family chipped in the difference or donated the difference uh, for that piece of property. Hi, I'm Laura Price, a co-coordinator with uh, Friends of Nadaka Park. And um, before everything um, got rolling, uh, Audubon commissioned a study to look at just the potential benefit of this park and how many uh, residents it could serve. And this uh, graph that you're looking at up here, um, well, first of all, I should say that the park, as it was purchased when it was a campfire girl day camp, it was completely fenced barbed wire on the top and it had a single, when the city bought it, it had a single gate on the north side. So what this study shows, the blue is a quarter mile different distance from that gate and um, green is a half mile distance, yellow three quarters mile and red a mile. Probably mile being kind of the outer, um, what shall I say, that's still a 15 or 20 minute walk which is very reasonable when you can think of a, a kind of a walkable community. So this, um, they first looked at um, kind of the, those concentric rings of how many folks this park could serve, which is the existing situation of the open gate. And then again, um, the, the open, the, the south gate with access, giving, giving access to all of those in division on um, Gleason and south and with the same concentric rings, but the, what is really um, telling about that is it actually 
doubled the amount of uh, community members that this park can serve just simply by opening that south gate. And, and here is sort of the matrix of all of that so that you see basically that we can serve, um, we have a uh, total population 17,500 and that was derived from the, the census in 2010 and with 50% of those being um, um, citizen, you know, residents of color. So that is pretty compelling. And here, so last uh, summer 2011, what we wanted to do is we're not only building a park, we're building a community around the park. So uh, we convened a, uh, a study group and um, that came together and involved at least 20 partners in the community. Of course, uh, St. Amos Church, but also the, you know, the food banks, Human Solutions, Verde, just um, everyone that had an interest in some way in being a part of this, and this is how we, this is the grassroots effort. So the planning um, came together to really vision what, what we want this park to be. Yes, there had been a master plan, but we wanted to give more, uh, have it make sure that it's a community vision. And um, hence our, the tagline of, um, that Nadaka Park is for families, for food and Nature. And nature, food. nature, food, and family in um, in Gresham. And another, this is sort of a, even a broader vision that we see as as a part of, uh, in addition to creating this particular hub that will just bring so many things together for the community. That uh, sort of a broader vision that it begins to sort of build. Um, an expanding constituency of, of community members that, that value um, just parks, green spaces, trails, that kind of whole green infrastructure in East County and Gresham as an amenity to the community. It's good for a lot of reasons. So this is just um, some of the partners that we have and that all work together on, we have a, um, um, declaration of cooperation where everyone is defined their role in terms of how they can help and be a part of this and contribute to making this vision happen. We have more than what you see up there. And let's see, did I miss, um, I'll come back. I'm going to hand it off to you again. Yeah. It's like, we'll just wing it. That <laughs> seems easier. So in 2010, the city of Gresham worked through a master plan process, which is required by the cities um, to do a master plan for the two acres. And so there were community meetings for that. And um, there was a, a firm hired, a, a architectural landscape firm that was hired to do, hold the meetings and come up with the design and everything. And this is what the original design was in 2010 for Nadaka. And as you can see, the, the community garden was on the uh, left side of this diagram, or it, that would be the west side of the property. And um, the nature-based play area was very small in this. So, the project committee, which you saw, was we met for, well, all over the summer and into the fall. And um, another thing that this includes that the city is requiring that we do are street improvements on Northeast Pacific, because if you develop a piece of property, just like if we had put an apartment complex on this piece of property, uh, you would have to do street improvements. And on Northeast Pacific, it's a one-lane street, and then there's um, the other lane is used now. It's dirt for parking. So that's a big chunk of the money that we need to raise. So the, the committee came up with, after much discussion with um, a lot of different groups and input from citizens, we came up with 
the new plan, uh, which is um, moving the, we hired a firm called MIG, and we did that with uh, grant money that we have raised from, again, East Multnomah and Metro. We've so far raised 100000 from East Multnomah Soil and Water to uh, get this project going, and we recently got a $239,000 grant from Metro. Um, we've also gotten a smaller grant from the Meyer Foundation for 25000 and um, it's, it's about a million dollar project with um, the, the street improvements that are required. But the firm MIG has been working since we hired them last May and we've been working very closely with them and they'll, they've been doing surveys and uh, meeting with the city and they'll do all the permitting and uh, they did sun studies that showed where the community garden was before was not going to work. And so we've moved the community garden over to the, the east side of the property. And um, those little things under where you see the garden plots, those are actually all going to be edible fruit, like blueberries and raspberries or something. I'm not sure exactly what. But um, we're required, because of some of the grant money that we got, that a third of the two acres be food production. So um, there's, we hope to have about 50 garden spots and then there'll be also some orchard uh, trees down here in this little spot. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. I'm confused. Okay. You talk about the two acre <coughs> area mm -hmm. and then you talk about the 10 acre right. area. Right. I, I'm confused as to what you're talking about where. The, I don't know if I should go back to all those. Um, well, we can try. Well, I think we can just speak to it. Okay. This, this the, yeah, this well. shows the 10 acres. I'm sorry, I got a little flustered at the beginning <laughs> and may have not it, described it completely. The 10 acre site was originally the Campfire Girls Camp. And the city of Gresham bought that in 1995 with parks bond money, if you can put it. Well, what is the, of the, ten the 10 acres is bounded on the north by Pacific. There are no streets on the east and west side. Uh, there are houses on the west side and mostly apartments on the east side. So this up there is Pacific Street. This is St. Aidan's Church right here. And this is Gleason. And this, so this is about 175th. Okay, so the this is the little two acres that we acquired okay. from grant money okay. is where the project is primarily. I'm with you. I'm yeah. Oh, oh, it, oh. Okay. right. And the gate on the south end right over here, there was a dirt road uh, from Gleason into that property that was private until we purchased it. So there was never access on the south end to Nadaka, only on the north end. So anyone that wanted to go to Nadaka that lived in the Rockwood area, which begins on Gleason, had to walk up to 181st or to 176th and then walk down two blocks to 100 um, and to Pacific, two blocks from Gleason and then walk down to 175th and go in the little opening. So all this time, that uh, parcel, 10 acres, was surrounded by an eight foot chain link fence, which is still there, but will be removed on the north and south. And it had barbed wire on top of that. So, and then that one gate that was open. So it, it has been that way since the 1950s. So, so many people in the community don't even realize that Nadaka is there, even now. And I've been involved since 2007 and organizing cleanups. Um, and for a couple of years, I did it almost every month. And I can't tell you how many people don't even know that it's a park. So opening, well, first purchasing that two acres 
which if they had built apartment buildings there, probably would have never had access on the south side. But um, as a result of the two acres and this project and removing that fence on the south and also on the north end at some time will make this this area where there will hopefully be a lot of activities from the community with a garden in, and the nature-based play area. Um, it will also introduce people in the community to the natural area, which there won't be any changes to that. So we're really focusing on the two acres, yeah. but the idea is it's going to be an integrated whole of a park that's a nature park with a nature play area, community garden, edible landscape with berries, community shelter, just a venue where I think it's going to be very exciting hub for the community where you just don't have a resource quite like this in um, northwest um, Gresham area. So, and this is just yet, as if we didn't have enough, one more facet to this project is some management of those 10 acres of woodland because um, studies have been done and they're finding uh, laminated root rot happening in some of those trees. So we do need to do forest management as well and um, and manage that. And I think we've, we've had foresters out identifying the trees that have that and so we'll be taking those down in the scheme of things. I mean, for, I think it's something like 40, but in a forest that's, that's really insignificant and actually the opportunity that can provide in terms of snakes or down debris and in terms of habitat enhancement will be good. And right now we're looking at opportunities to actually yet do another partnership maybe with colleges that there's an educational opportunity here to do some, you know, research study and, and um, on the management end of the forest. So, so I know that Lee mentioned um, who the primary funders and partners are, but we just wanted to um, kind of go over that a bit with you. So as she said, uh, East Multnomah Soil and, and Water Conservation District has been a very loyal partner and have provided 100000 toward this project. Metro Na Nature and Neighborhoods Program also provided um, 239000 uh, the city is is providing 30,000, and Meyer Memorial Trust gave a grant of 25,000, primarily toward project management, so we can kind of take this process forward. But um, all of this couldn't be done with a kind of a core team of collaborators, and that is um, includes Audubon um, and the East Branch that is now out here working with the community, Friends of Nadaka led by Lee, and Columbia Slough Watershed Council, um, and they are our fiscal agent to help us um, do the, the grant um, seeking um, that we are and, and managing the project. So, um, and East Rose is nearby, and of course State Aidens, and so they are both very actively involved. Um, and, am I missing? Okay, did we cover everybody? So that, we're kind of the core coordinators in of the project. So, um, and there's always something going on. <laughs> there isn't there. And you want to speak yep. to that? Yeah, well, this, yeah. I think this one talks yeah. about what if um, oh, okay. people want to get okay. involved so, or um, make donations or things that we need. Right, so with that uh, um, declaration of cooperation, um, said we're reaching out to the community and it's not just to help it's just as important as to have every you know as much ownership and involvement in this we're not just looking for dollars so we certainly have a you know a big price to, to try to uh, raise funding for but um, just as much so I think um, the various organizations in Gresham and communities can bring a lot in terms of uh, volunteers or helping to coordinate um, or other resources forward so um, if any organization or individual would like to be a part of this we do have on uh, the Columbia Slough Watershed 
Council website, there's a place that one, where one can donate um, online or send to the uh, address that you see up there. And also, since this is really a total community grassroots driven project, we see that a lot of, you know, there's opportunity for in-kind service or in-kind materials as well, just in the building. And, the, and what you see here is kind of a running list at the bottom of, of things, whether it's bark mulch, topsoil, boulders, we're using a lot of boulders in Rockwood, um, that will be used in the uh, children's natural play area. And um, fencing, et cetera, et cetera, tools. Um, so there's a lot of ways to contribute in any small or larger way. And here's just on the calendar right now. Actually, we just, um, this was kind of exciting. On December 1st, we did a pretty large scale. The garden area is going to be 17,000 square feet. And what we're doing is getting an early stir start on sheet mulching, which is basically a kind of um, in place composting to turn what is now field or lawn into some nice, rich soil. So we had um, 52 volunteers all day on uh, December 1st laying down um, uh, dairy compost, cardboard sheets, wood chips, leaves on top of that. It's all going to compost in place and get some wonderful organic activity happening. And I think I calculated we moved 2,400 wheelbarrows of material that day. So we get to watch that. Um, plus, it's just you can start to see the garden that's going to be there. Um, so um, we actually have continued. We want to sheet mulch under some of the fir trees and other places, the berry zones. So we'll probably be continuing some of those volunteer projects. Um, but on the development side, we're going through land use and development review with our consultant, MIG, um, leading that and permitting continued community engagement always. And, um, and a real focus is to kind of finish gathering the funds that we need. So yes, we're going after whatever um, grants, um, State Parks has a pretty sizable grant, the um, CBDG grant will be, we are looking at, but again, it's um, whatever source we <laughs> and way that we can um, bring to this project to help it come to be is we're pursuing all avenues. And our hope is that we get the funding so that we can begin kind of major construction um, this late summer or fall, the soonest that it would be available. But we're doing pieces that we can on a volunteer basis beforehand, just like the sheet mulch project. And there's, um, this is, how, what year annual is this third. now? The third annual year of the Nadaka Festival will be, community festival will be on August 3rd. So. Uh, for anybody that um, has not had the opportunity to enjoy the park should for sure come and check that out. And uh, I think I'll stop there. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah. Um, besides what is up here, on actually just agreed yesterday uh, to do a cleanup on Saturday the 19th, which is not this weekend, but the weekend after from 9 o'clock until noon. And uh, we'll be removing invasives primarily and picking up any trash that are around. Um, then on solve, uh, we're committed to do a cleanup with solve and have been doing cleanups with solve, organizing those for at least three or four years. And uh, that will be on April 20th from 9 until 1. And it's great to partner with SOLVE because they have online registration. And um, it's a great organization that get, helps us get the word out. Um, we're thinking about doing a Nadaka bird tour and uh, evening walk on June 9th from 7 until 8. And we're going to go by a couple of the neighboring apartment buildings to pick up people first and then walk in to Nadaka for a tour. And then again, the August 3rd is when the festival is and we usually do a cleanup from 9 until noon 
in the on, primarily on the 10 acres. And then from one until three, we have food, free food, and uh, the Audubon Society will bring their birds. And we had a disc golf demonstration and games for children and music. So um, that's been a great event for us. We've had about 250 people that come to that event. Um, we have a website, friendsofnadaka.org, and we're also on Facebook, um, Friends of Nadaka, if any of you are into Facebook. And there's usually a lot of activity uh, on Facebook, and we try to keep the website going uh, as far as things that are planned. But one of the fun things that we've had uh, with Facebook is reconnecting with Campfire Girls. And last year, we actually had some of the Campfire Girls, one came from Seattle, and uh, there were probably at least 10 of them that showed up, and they were so thrilled to uh, walk through the park and look at where the little campfire sites used to be, and, and they had a witch tree, and the turtle rock is still there. But um, it's really fun to see the comments, uh, particularly, I think, from the campfire girls. And we uh, got a, a recent small grant uh, for a campfire girls kiosk at Nadaka, and they actually have the old hand-drawn map that shows where all the facilities, the first aid station, and where their campfires were, and, and also where the witch tree was, and the turtle rock, and, and uh, they have a lot of photographs from back in the day. And so that may go up the end of January, I'm not quite sure about that, but we have two people, the campfire girl historian and her husband is building it. So uh, that'll be a great addition because I think the campfire organization is a great part of the history of Nadaka. And um, so that should be fun. Plus the food growing really speaks to the, you know, Gresham's cultural history too mm -hmm. and the economy. And so I'm excited about that. And I think if you get a chance afterwards, we have these boards up here, which are images, but if you haven't seen a, what a children's nature play area mm -hmm. is, we have a lot of images borrowed from some of the others that have built in the, uh, that have already been built, um, one up at Blue Lake and there's others uh, around the region. And it's just the way that very, that's very hands-on for little kids. We always used to play in nature and hop on rocks and climb logs and make build forts with sticks. and. So it's a whole, um, I think people are recognizing the value of that and actually constructing, and it's, it's no small feat. It takes mm -hmm. as, it has as many requirements as a pre-manufactured playground, but it provides a really different experience for kids that's much more hands-on and exploratory. So we're really excited about that. I think that may be it. And uh, I really want to thank you all for inviting us and giving us this opportunity to come and tell you about the project because it's, I, th I, I truly believe that it's, it's going to be a gem for Gresham and uh, it holds so many different possibilities to expose people not only to growing food but also uh, to the forest which I, I think there is magic there, and I would encourage everyone to take a walk over. There's a quarter mile trail that circles through the middle of the forest that uh, is easy to walk on, and it's very open along the trail, and you just get a different feeling when you walk in there. And then you can walk out to the meadow and look out to this two acres and just imagine what it's going to be like to see people planting food and children playing there. I mean, I think it's a, a wonderful so project. I just want to add, thanks to Lee's kind of dedication of stewardship of loving this place and all the work parties that you've done, it, it, it transforms everybody who comes mm -hmm. and works and they start to see it through different eyes. Maybe before there was a little blight or fear based around what's going on in this place, you know. And now, especially just since like opening that south gate, 
and keeping the trails maintained. We're seeing the activity that you see, like after work in the summer, I was here and you see people walking their dogs, parents with young children in their strollers. We're really changing the social life of this setting and, and, and that to me is really exciting to see what that can be when you bring all of these aspects together and um, as a venue, you could have day camps again. With our that's, garden in nature. Yeah, that's what yeah. that's what I'm hopeful yeah. of. And, and, and I walk circle. Yeah, I walk my yeah. dog over there in the morning and uh, I've seen since we opened the gate, I've seen people from the apartment complex walking their children through the forest to go to H B Lee Middle School. And H B Lee Middle School I've been working with the Sun program there for about three years and they come over to Nadaka and learn about invasives and uh, native plants and it's been a wonderful classroom for them and also there's a Alzheimer's facility on the corner of, almost on the corner of 172nd in Gleason and now since that gate has been open now they are actually taking some of their clients down there to let them stroll through or push them through on a wheelchair because you can do that um, to enjoy the forest and they've also had at times contests with their staff people, mm -hmm. uh, walking contests, they've gotten their little things to keep track of how far they walk and so they'll walk down there because it is a quarter mile loop and uh, so just just the mere thing of uh, the small thing of open, it wasn't a small thing to fears but uh, <laughs> yeah. you would think it would be just a small thing just cut that lock off. A but, major um, reception change. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's really done wonders for Nadaka and opened it up to a whole another group of people that mostly didn't even know that it was there. Yeah. Well, Susan and I have taken the Volkswagen <laughs> through there and, oh, it, yeah. and it's a beautiful area. Yeah. But dating clear back, my kids used to go down in the Nadaka for the, you know, the Camp campfire girls. Mm -hmm. Only always dropped them off on Gleason and they went right in at that point. There wasn't the fence around them during that stage wow. of the game. Wow. That, yeah, I, I've heard that people used to, the buses sometimes would come and park in St. Aidan's parking lot too and they'd walk across mm -hmm. and go in. But it's a so do you know when they put the big fence up? I thought, I personally thought it was always there, but um, I, I haven't heard anyone <laughs> say, I thought since it was the campfire girls, they owned that piece of property. I thought they're the ones that installed the fence, and I thought it had always been there. But, yeah. Hmm. Oh, going full circle. Yeah. Where did the name Sadaka come from? Nadaka. Nadaka was named by the campfire girls, actually, and it they, it stands for Nature Day Camp. Nadaka. Yeah. Native American. Well, <laughs> Native American. Very clever. So, I don't know if you all have any other questions. Because so. I can go on and on. <laughs> Thank you. Nice. Nice presentation. Thank you. Thank you.